ערב טוב רבותיי, today's learning should be לעילוי נשמת נריה בן סבדלנה ארנבייב מנוחתו בגן עדן, אמן. רבותיי, the days of ספירת העומר, we know we are mourning for the first 34 days, the passing of the 24,000 students of רבי עקיבא, one of the greatest sages that the Jewish nation ever had, to the point that the Gemara tells us that רבי עקיבא reached a level that even משה רבנו told Hashem, why are you giving the Torah through me? Give it through Akiva ben Yosef. He is learning halachot tilei tilim shel halachot from the crowns, the tagim. I don't know what he's talking about until he heard Rabbi Akiva say Torah Moshe misinai. Moshe Rabbeinu nachad dato. The Mikubalim tell us that Rabbi Akiva reached the shar nun of chokhmah that even Moshe Rabbeinu didn't reach, and Rabbi Akiva lost twenty four thousand students that he put twenty four years of his life into Rabotai. He didn't see his wife for twenty four years. The Midrash tells us that he left his child. When he came back, he already had a son that was grown up. 24 years he left his wife to devote for Hashem, to build Torah for Am Yisrael, to build students. And they all passed away within 34 days. We're talking about, I don't remember the math, seven or 800 funerals a day. Rabotai, all because the Gemara tells us that on whatever level it was, they did not respect each other properly. And it is incumbent upon us Baruch Hashem, Rabbi Akiva didn't break. He didn't become depressed. It says he went to the south. He found five new students. Among them, we know Rabbi Shem Bar Yochai. And from them, we have the entire generation, all the Torah to the end of the generations. They were the ones that reestablished the Torah and taught it to all the Jewish nation. And Rabotai, we have to take this lesson to our hearts. We mourn every year. You know, we go through the same questions every year. We want loopholes for music. We want loopholes for shaving. We want loopholes for everything. But the lesson, Rabotai, that we have to take is that the students of Rabbi Akiva, 24,000 students, they all passed away from a plague, from Askara, from, from a very painful death, the Gemara says, because they didn't respect each other properly, whatever that means on their level. I don't want to get into that. But Rabotai, we have to take it upon ourselves to start caring more about Ben Adam Nechavero between man to man, man to his fellow friends. So Rabotai, I decided... Bezrat Hashem Blinedel, we will try to begin the Sefer Chafetz Chaim, the laws of Lashon Ra. From the introduction, we're going to do it, you know, little by little. There's a Dafyomi calendar for it. I don't know what they're up to now, but we'll try to follow the way the book organizes it to split it up into the days. Bezrat Hashem Rabotai, like this, we'll try to learn the laws of um, proper speech, proper ethics, how to speak about somebody. There's a famous story with the Chafetz Chaim when he published his book on the laws of guarding your speech. People complained. They said, until now we could say that whatever we wanted. Now we have to worry about how to speak. Chafetz Chaim told them, on the contrary. Until now you couldn't say anything because you didn't know what to say. Now that I wrote my book, now you know how to speak and what you could say. Let us, Rabotai, begin to delve into the holy words of the Chafetz Chaim. We are going to begin with the preface, with the um, introduction of the Chafetz Chaim. Baruch Hashem Elokei Yisrael. The Chafetz Chaim says, Bless the Hashem, the God of Yisrael. Hashem Yibdilanu Mikol Amim." who separated us from all the nations. And he gave us his Torah. And he brought us into the Holy Land, Eretz Yisrael, so that we can have the schut, the merit, to fulfill all these mitzvot. All Hashem's intention was solely for our benefit. So that through the fulfillment of Torah and mitzvot, we will, we will become holy to Him. Like the Pasuk tells us in chapter 15, Pasuk 40, So that you may remember and perform all my commandments and be holy to your God. Because through observing the Torah and mitzvot and becoming holy, we will be able to kabel et ashpa'at tuvo v'rov chazdo to receive the pouring, the outpouring of Hashem's goodness and His abundant kindness, both in this world and in the world to come. Like the Pasuk tells us in Sefer Dvarim, chapter 10, Pasuk 12, What does Hashem, your God, ask you to fear Him, to love Him, to follow in His ways? To observe the commandments of Hashem and His decrees. Which I command you today, for your benefit. And if you look, the Chavitz Chaim tells us, if you look over there in the commentary of the Ramban, the Hai Letovlach, when the Pasuk says, for your benefit, it's referring back to the beginning of the Pasuk, what is Hashem your God asking from you? Meaning, 
Hashem asks us to fulfill His commandments, not for His own needs, but for our benefit, because by doing so, we're going to be deserving of Hashem's outpouring blessings, His bountiful blessings. Now, the Chavetz Chaim continues, The Lord Daesh Bazishin Atananu at Klechim Dato. Hashem was not satisfied by giving us His treasured um, Torah, Klechim Dato, His beloved Torah. He also commanded us not to forsake it. Like the Pasuk tells us in Mishlei, in chapter 4, Pasuk 2, I gave you a good commodity, a good acquisition, a good lechach. Do not forsake my Torah. This is, Hashem is not like flesh and blood. If a person were to give his friend a valuable gift, and his friend doesn't treat it properly and he doesn't cherish it. The giver, the person that gave it, he always yearns for the time that his friend's going to throw away the gift completely. So he can go back and take it. This person doesn't appreciate my gift. I'm going to try to wait till he gets rid of it so I'll get it back. This is not Hashem's ways because Hashem's on the opposite. Not only did he give, on the contrary, not only did he give us the Torah, his klechim da, but he also commanded us, he begged us that we maintain ownership over his gift. In each generation of the first Bet Mikdash, Hashem established prophets for us in order to return us to the right path. Hashem took steps to make sure that we're going to fulfill our mission by commanding us to cherish his Torah. And not only that, he sent prophets to try to return us to the path and we would turn away. Even though we didn't listen to the prophets or bukes and the Bet Mikdash was destroyed, we still had another opportunity to fulfill our mission by the second Bet Mikdash. Even during the second Bet Mikdash era, because of our many sins, the Jewish people's level fell from the original state of holiness. And they lacked five holy things that we had during the first Bet Mikdash era, which is the five things were the Aaron Kodesh, Kaporet, and Kruvim. The heavenly fire that was over the Mizbeach, the Shechina, Ruach HaKodesh, and the Ulim B'tumim. We were lacking it because our level went down. Im Kunzed, nevertheless, Biotenu and Admatenu, since we were still on our land, Eretz Yisrael, Vayalanu Bet HaBichira, nevertheless, we had the Bet HaMikdash, Hayinu Lecholim Lekayim Kol Mitzvot HaTorah, we were able to fulfill all the Mitzvot of the Torah, Ubaze Hayinu Lecholim Lashlim Kol Chelkei HaNefesh HaNimtzim Banu. And in this way, by fulfilling the Torah, we would have been able to perfect all the aspects of our soul that are within us, because corresponding to the amount of limbs and signs we have in our physical body, the soul also has 248 spiritual limbs and 365 spiritual sinus, each misvah corresponding to the spiritual um, part of your physical body. He says, for more of the elaboration of this concept, go look into the Arizal's primary student of Chaim Bital in the um, Shari Kedushah in chapter 1. That by observing the Torah and 613 mitzvot, we're able to perfect the 613 parts of our spiritual bodies. Now, however, towards the end of the second Bet Mikdash era, Baseless hatred, sinat chinam, hatred for no reason, and lashonara, derogatory speech, prevailed amongst us because of our many sins, unfortunately. The because of this, the Bet Mikdash was destroyed. We were exiled from Eretz Yisrael. The Kitzes Misachet Yoma and the Bavli and the Yerushalmi Misachet Yoma. Even though the Gemara only said the reason of baseless hatred, not Lashonara, HaKavana wa Lashonara Gamkin, the Chavetz Chaim says that Sinat Chinam refers as well to Lashonara, Shiyotzet Mitzad Asinah, because Lashonara stems from hatred. Because otherwise, if Lashonara would, would not have been included in the um, sin of the Jewish people, and it was not the uh, it was not a consequence of sinat chinam, we would have not been punished so severely. The Chavetz Chaim says, "Vainu the same sham," and that is why the Gemara there concludes, "Lelamedcha to teach you, 
שקשה שנאת חינם כנגד עבודה זרה, גילוי עוד ושפיכות המין. That baseless hatred, hating somebody for no reason, is just as severe as עבודה זרה, idolatry, immorality, and murder. וזה מצינו בערכים גבי לשון הרע. And this we find the Gemara says in מסכת הערכים on page 15b, regarding לשון הרע, that it is the equivalent to the three cardinal sins. So we see that from the fact that the Gemara מסכת יומה says that שנאת חינם equals these three sins, it must be it's referring to לשון הרע as well, like the other Gemara מסכת ערכים. ועוד מגופו דשמט עד יום המוכח כמו שכתבנו, he says likewise the actual passage in מסכת יומה proves like we wrote that it's a reference to לשון הרע, מדי פרח שם, כזה גמרא דרו אסקס, ובמקדש ראשון, during the time of the first bet of מקדש, the Gemara says what, there was no basis hatred, וכולי, ודוקחים את חבריהן, they would stab their friends with daggers of the tongue, עיין שם, that's a clear reference to לשון הרע, וחבץ חיים says look over there and that's סוגיה מור. So the חבץ חיים demonstrated to us that the sin of לשון הרע is not only the cause of the, it's not only the cause of of the destruction of the past Bet Mikdash, but it's even preventing the rebuilding of the new one. Ume'az ba'adata, ever since the destruction of the second Bet Mikdash until now, bechol yom anu mitzapim u'mitpalim lifnei HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Every single day, we desire, we yearn, and we pray before Hashem, she'ikrav otanu, that'll bring us, ikarev otanu, that'll bring us closer. Ka'asher yiftichanu betorato kdusha l'vedin yav kama pa'amim, like he promised in his holy Torah and his prophets countless times. ואין מתקבל את תפילתנו לפניו, but our prayers are not accepted before השם. כמו שאמרו חז"ל בברכות, like חז"ל עושה מסכת ברכות on page 32b. מיום שנחרב בית המקדש, from the day the בית המקדש was destroyed, חומה של ברזל מפסקת בין ישראל לאבים שבשמיים. An iron wall, an iron barrier separates the Jewish people from their father in heaven. ובאמת לא עליו חס ושלום הוא תלונתנו. He says, in truth, our complaints, our... Um, Our grieving that Mashiach did not come yet, that's not directed towards Hashem, God forbid. Kim al atzmenu, it's directed towards ourselves. Ki mitzido li batzer chas v'shom. Because as far as Hashem is concerned, there is nothing lacking. Hashem is perfect. There's nothing Hashem preventing Hashem from being Mashiach if He wanted to. Ki moshe katub b'yishaya, like the pasuk in Yishaya says in chapter 59, pasuk 1 and 2, Hen lo katzra yad Hashem me'oshia, surely the hand of Hashem is not too limited to save. Ve'lo kabdao z'no mishmoa, His ear is not hard of hearing our prayers. Rather, it is your sins which, separate, which is separating between us and Hashem. That's what we find in the Gemara Meseret Sanedrin Perek Chelek on page 98a that in the times of Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, he once met Mashiach, the Gemara says, and he asked them when he would come. Mashiach said today, that later, When Mashiach didn't come and he questioned the Leo Navi and he was told that Mashiach meant Shayom im bekoloti shmau yavo Mashiach. When he said Hayom, I'm coming today, he meant today if the Jewish nation listens to Hashem, I'm going to come. Af shelo nishlam az adayin zman agalut shenigzar Yisrael. Even though the time of Rabbi Yisroel ben Levi's days, the gzera, the preordained decree that we had of the exile wasn't completed yet. שיהיו אלף שנים בגלות, the decree was that we would remain in exile for 1,000 years, כמניין יומו של הקדוש ברוך הוא, which is the equivalent of one of Hashem's days. כמו שמצינו בדברי חז"ל, we find in uh, the words of חז"ל, עם כל זה, but nevertheless, היה כוח התשובה מבטל את הגזרה, the power of תשובה could have nullified the decree, and משיח would have come right away had the Jews repented, וכל שכן בזמננו, All the more so in our times, שזה יותר משמונה מאות שנה שקלה היום הנ"ל. The Chavetz Chaim is writing this almost 200 years ago, and he says that more than 800 years have passed after that final date of the 1,000 decree, uh, 1,000 year decree was mentioned. ואין הסיבה כי אם מצידנו. We see that the reason of the exile is not because of Hashem's, not on Hashem's side, God forbid. It's solely on us. שבעוונותינו הרבים אין אנו מניחים לו שישרה שכינתו בתוכנו. Because due to our many sins, we do not allow Hashem to rest his שכינה among us. וכאשר נחפשה דרכנו ונחקורה, when we examine our ways and we investigate, איזה עוונות הם מהעיקרים הגורמים לאיכות גלותנו? Which sins are the cause of our lengthy exile? נמצאים הרבה, we're going to find many sins. 
אך however חת הלשון הוא על כולו מפני כמה טעמים the sin of לשון הרע supersedes all the other sins for several reasons and the Chavetz Chaim demonstrates several um, proofs אחד proof number one כיוון שזה היה העיקר לסיבת גלותנו since לשון הרע was the primary reason we were exiled in the first place like we brought כמו שהבינו מהגמרא מיומה מיושן like we brought proofs from the גמרות אם כן if so כל כמה שלא נראה לתקן זה החטא, as long as we fail to fix the sin, איך תוכל להיות גאולה? How could there be a redemption? כיוון שזה החטא פגם כל כך, because since this sin of השנרה was so damaging to the extent, שעל ידי זה גלינו מארצנו, we were exiled from our land, על אחת כמה וכמה שאינו מניחנו לבוא לארצנו. If the שנרה kicked us out, for sure the שנרה is preventing us from coming in. ועוד the second proof. הלא ידוע הוא, it is well known שנגזר עלינו גלות מכבר, that we were already ex- decreed to become um, exiled. מעת מעשה המרגלים, from the time of the incident with the spies. כמו שכתוב בתהילים, like it says in תהילים, וישא ידו להם להפיל אותם, וגומר בגויים ולזרותם בארצות. השם lifted his hands in a, so to speak, a swear, a vow against Israel to make them fall and to scatter them among the lands. That pasuk teaches us that already because of the Meraglim we were destined to go to exile. Uchmo shepirish Rashi sham ba Ramban bechubash parashat shalach. Like Rashi explains them, like the Ramban explains the parashat shalach. The chet the Meraglim halo ayah avon lashon hara. The sin of the Meraglim, the, the spies, was improper speech. So we see from the um, pasuk in Tilim that the reason we were decreed to go to exile was because of lashon hara. In ken, if so, אנו מוכרחים לתקן זה אחרת קודם הגאולה. We have to fix the sin before the redemption will actually come. ועוד נמצא מפורש, she says, another proof we find explicitly written, שעוון זה גורם שהוא ישראל נרדים בפרך. This sin causes the Jewish people to become subjugated with, brack, uh, with back-breaking labor. How does he know? ממה שכתוב בפרשת שמות, like it says in פרשת שמות, אכן נודע הדבר. משה רבנו When he went out and he was struggling to comprehend why are the Jewish people being punished so severely. And then the incident happened when he killed the Egyptian and then he saw Datan Abiram fighting and he told them, why are you fighting? He says, Rasha, lama takerecha, why are you hitting your friend? And they told him, are you going to kill us like you killed the Egyptian? And Moshe Rabbeinu said, achen oda dabar. Now the matter is known. What is known? And the Ayan, the Perush Rashi, Hashem, if you look at Rashi over there, he explains that when Moshe Rabbeinu realized the Jewish people are speaking with Shonara, he says, now I understand why the Jewish people deserve to be punished with back-baking labor. A fourth proof the Chavetz Chaim brings. Ve'od nimtza mefurash b'midrash rabba parashat tetzeh. I'm sorry, parashat ki tetzeh. You'll find an explicit midrash in parashat ki tetzeh. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu Hashem says, Ba'olam hazeh in this world, על ידי שהיה לשון רע ביניכם, because there was לשון רע among you, סילקתי שכינה מביניכם, I removed my שכינה from your, pre- from your midst. אבל לעתיד לבוא, but in the future, Hashem says, when I'm going to uproot the עץ הערה, I'm going to return my שכינה to you. And רבותיי, the חבץ חיים brings a fifth proof, and what, and what this will most probably um, end for today, let's see. ועוד מקרא מפורש בפרשת ברכה, There's also an explicit pasuk in Parshat Bezot Abracha in Sebat Dvarim. Vayi Bishurun Melech Bidah Sebra She'am Yachat Shifei Yisrael And he was the king over Yishurun which means Eretz Yisrael when the leaders of the nations are gathered and the tribes of Yisrael were unified. Upi Resh Rashi Sham Bu Ma'amar HaSifri Rashi explains there and his explanation comes from the Sifri. She'em Matai U Melech Bishurun When is Hashem king over Yishurun which is over the Jews? specifically when the tribes of Israel are unified not when they're divided into separate groups and it is known that this um, discord of going into separate groups usually comes because of a shonara says besides from this besides from the fact that shonara is, is um, prolonging our exile, האח יכולות לחול עלינו ברכותיו של הקדוש ברוך הוא שאנו מקווים לזה How could Hashem's blessings for which we hope come on us כיוון דברנותינו הרבים because of our sins because of our many sins אנו מורגלים בחטא זה We're already accustomed to speak in לשון הרע הלא יש על זה ארור מפורש בתורה There is an explicit curse in the Torah that says ארור מכה ראו בסתר Somebody who strikes his friend in secret should be cursed. 
the like Rashi tells us, Shukaya Lashonara. This curse applies to someone who's speaking Lashonara, like Rashi, Kama Shipirish Rashi Sham. Ulvad Shah, a win Shesh Sham, Odanze, Kambor, the command, so Ptiha and Sham, besides for the additional curses that somebody speaking Lashonara gets, like we're going to say later on in the Ptiha, and I want to mention to you, Rabotai, I think we're going to stop here for today. I want to mention to you, Rabotai, just uh, we're always supposed to end with a good conclusion that. I saw in the deer shoe they brought down, I forgot which Gdoladoro was, maybe Rav Steinman, that's all. They asked for a sigula for a bracha. Can you give us a sigula to, to, to be prosperous, to have parnasa, etc.? And the Gdoladoro answered them, the biggest sigula, the biggest bracha you can get is from the Torah itself. The Torah says, cursed is one that speaks Lashonara. Must be the opposite. It shows the truth. If you don't speak Lashonara, you are blessed. So instead of running around to get sigula from this rab, from that rab, by following the simple pasuk in the Torah of not speaking the Shonara, you already get an immediate blessing from Hashem Barach. Bezad Hashem Rabotai, we will continue with the introduction, with the Akdamab, the Chavetz Chaim tomorrow. Amen.